you get a handful that that is really interested in the history and that'll get real details but in general it's what are you doing out here what a cool job what's your horse's name when is the cattle going to be here or when are you going to run the bulls yeah <laughs> run the bulls We're the Fort Worth Herd. We do daily cattle drives at 11.30 and 4 o'clock. We ride horseback, taking 15 head of longhorns down the street to reenact the 1800 cattle drive that came through the stockyards. Every day of the year, except Christmas Day, Thanksgiving Day, and Easter Sunday, kind of serve as ambassadors for the city of Fort Worth. My favorite is uh, talking to some people and I asked them how they heard about this. They'd come to see the cattle drive and they said they'd heard about it on the Nile River. You meet everything there is in the world, I guarantee it. From different nations that come over and different states and different type people and most of them don't even have a clue, never even seen a horse or any of the animals and they are so fascinated. It's really awesome. everybody wants to come up and pet them and touch them and ask us about the, the history of the stockyards and of the longhorns and uh, it, it really attracts people. From the visitors they think that uh, Fort Worth is plumb full of people like like us dressed down here in our period dress and it's really not like that in Texas actually. The uh, cowboy is alive and well but it's just not as many around as there was. They're actually out on the ranches, not in the big cities. This thing really kind of got started back in 95. In 1995, there was an actual cattle drive of 250 Longhorn cattle that went from the stockyards to Miles City, Montana. Some of those cattle that went on that, on that cattle drive in 1995 were brought back to Texas. They were not sold. When they brought them back to Texas, five of them were donated back to the city of Fort Worth. When this program got started in 1999, five of the original steers that were on the cattle drive were on that cattle drive in 1995 to Miles City, Montana. We have 18 head here now. We have some new ones. They're all probably average weighing around 14, 1500 pounds. Their horns will average six foot from tip to tip. Before we put them on the street, they're, we pretty well know what each steer is going to do. In cow kids, what we do, we teach the little kids how to rope, stick horse races, and then cowboy dances. Some of the droves play guitars and sing. We have a chuck wagon we bring out talk about the history of the chuck wagon. We do it an hour from 1.30, 2.30, Saturdays and Sundays. Do anybody have any questions about the whip? What is the question? So if you hit a cow or something, it won't hurt them? Yes, it'll hurt them. Yes, it will hurt them. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make them bleed? See? Would now, what if I did this to you? Yeah. Would that hurt you? Yes. Yeah, yeah of course. You don't want to hit them with it. No, we don't hit them with it. We just use it to control them, that's all. Well, our education program is designed to give kids kind of a, a quick version of the Chisholm Trail, what it was for the cowboys, what their job was like, some of the experiences they may have had, how they interacted with the cattle and with each other, and how the trail boss kind of took kids on to raise, basically, and took them up the trail. You know, we're all pretty old in the program, but we try to emphasize that most of them would have been teenagers. They would have gone up the trail. All the kids that come down here, they never care about us people that ride the horse and doing all the hard work. 
they always want to know what the horse's name is. So to teach them something that they can take back to their classroom, historic, we give them all historic uh, name. Bose gets his name from a black cowboy that went up the trail as Bose Iker. He was a scout for Charles Goodnight going up the Goodnight Loving Trail. And in honor of that gentleman, Bose Iker, we've named this horse Bose. Teddy Roosevelt had a horse named Little Texas. That when the ship came in, the water was so low they couldn't come on into shore. So what they had to do, they had to take the horses and all the cargo and throw it over out into the sea. So all the horses started swimming back out into the ocean. They were going the wrong way. So Teddy Roosevelt's bugle blew the horn, and when he did, Little Texas heard it and turned around and started swimming back to shore, and all the rest of the horses turned around also. So all the horses were saved. And that's how he got his name. The, the name Chapo comes from a song that was written by a cowboy from New Mexico by the name of Jack Thorpe. Jack Thorpe was a drover that went up and down the cattle trail back in the 1800s. And every once in a while, Jack would sit down and he would write songs about the drovers, about the horses, or about the cattle drivers. And one day he sat down and he wrote a song with the word Chapo in it, and that's where he gets his name. We try to portray the uh, 1860s to the 1890s, the era of the uh, Chisholm Trail, and we try to show Fort Worth as a stopping point on that, and we try to dress period correct of them years, 1860 to 1890s. We have historicans re research our saddles, and they're all period correct. We had them made from a local saddle maker, and had all of our saddles just like they rode back in the late 1800s. Of the 40,000 drovers that went up the Chisholm Trail, a third of them were either women, uh, blacks, or vaqueros. They were Native Americans also. The rest of them were Irish, German. A lot of people just strayed over from the other countries. And a lot of them were the cowboys that already went up there. All walks of life. They weren't the cleanest people in the world. Between the mud and the dirt, they all looked the same. They never had haircuts. They never shaved. They had filthy, dirty, nasty, smelly clothes on. They were all as one. They would have got a breakfast, probably before the sun come up, they would have got them maybe some beans, biscuits, and maybe coffee. Coffee was the favorite drink. They would have left that whole day when uh, rode their horses, might have exchanged horses out of their remuda, and then they would have had to uh, come in that night and get their supper, which consisted of beans, bacon, and biscuits again, and once again, the favorite drink was coffee. And if they didn't have to once the herd at night, they got to go to bed. Probably their day consisted of maybe 16 hours a day. City of Fort Worth, back in the old days, it was a fort, but the main importance was it's a supply point. In other words, where they got their food, uh, any type of supplies, and they'd also round up drovers at that point too, because it was a town fort, because it was not another stopping point until they got further up north past the Oklahoma line. A lot of people never knew nothing about it, and they didn't know that it was diff various different types of cowboys. The cowboys were hard work, and right today, cowboy work is hard work. The perception today is the glamour cowboy, easy work, you get to ride around on a horse and look cool all day. That's not it. Well, a lot of the modern cowboys now, of course, they do a lot from four-wheelers or pickups instead of a horseback. The work is not as hard. They've got a lot more conveniences, a lot of easier way of doing things easier way of handling the cattle. You know, pastures are fenced in now and cross fenced and they have not sent a big area to work them. And it's just a lot easier now. When we used to go down the river and take the cattle one, one day of the month, the first Wednesday of the month, and would follow the river and go all the way to downtown, I mean, I would stand right there, skyscrapers, I mean, multiple stories high, and people are looking at us with binoculars and we're standing there with cattle. Who would ever dream of doing a job like that? Working in a big metroplex, in a metropolitan area like this, working as a cowboy, driving cattle and in this computer age that we're living in, it goes back to basics. It goes back to the cowboy and the ground and the horses and the cattle. <laughs>